potential is unlimited. You are your most valuable asset. Your life, your potential, and your possibilities are the most precious things you have. Thus, your great goal in life should be to fulfill that potential and become everything you are capable of becoming. Your ability to learn, grow, and fulfill your potential is unlimited. Today, people are graduating from high school and college in their 70s, learning new subjects and developing new capabilities. Your ability to learn and remember can continue throughout your life if you keep your brain alive, alert, and functioning at its best. Your most precious financial asset is your earning ability. Your ability to work is your primary source of cash throughout your life. You could lose your home, your car, your bank account, or everything you own, but as long as you have your earning ability, you can earn it all back and more in the months and years ahead. Your biggest investment. Most people don't realize this. They take their earning ability for granted, but it has taken you your entire life to develop your earning ability. Every bit of education, experience, and hard work that you have invested in learning your craft and developing your skills has gone into building this asset. Your earning ability is very much like a muscle. It can increase in strength and power year by year as a result of regular exercise. Likewise, the opposite is true too. If left alone or ignored, your earning ability, like your muscles, can become weaker or even decline because you have simply failed to upgrade it continually. In other words, your earning ability can be either an appreciating or a depreciating asset. An appreciating asset is something that grows in value and cash flow every year as a result of continual investment and improvement. A depreciating asset, on the other hand, is something that loses value over time and finally reaches the point at which it is written off, being of little or no further value. The choice is yours as to whether your earning ability is increasing or decreasing month by month and year by year. See yourself as the president of your own personal services corporation. Imagine that you were going to take your company public on the stock market. Would you recommend your company as a growth stock, continually increasing its value and earning ability each year? Or would you describe your company as one that has leveled off in the marketplace, that is not really going anywhere in terms of increased value and income? Would you recommend stock in U Inc. as an excellent investment? Why or why not? What got you here won't get you any further. Some people are actually losing value each year, declining their earning ability because they are not continually upgrading their knowledge and skills. They don't realize that whatever knowledge and skill they have today is rapidly becoming obsolete. It's being replaced by new knowledge and skills that if you don't have them and someone else does, you will be in danger of being overtaken by your competition. Join the top 20%. In chapter one, I mentioned that the 80-20 rule applies to income. The top 20% of people in our society earn and control 80% of the assets. According to Forbes, Fortune, Business Weekend, Wall Street Journal, and the IRS, by many estimates, the top 1% of Americans control as much as 33% of the assets. The most interesting discovery in income inequality is that most millionaires, multimillionaires, and billionaires in America are first generation. They started with little or nothing and earned all their money by themselves in one lifetime. In America, there's a high level of income mobility which means that you are able to move from the lower levels of income to the upper levels. Almost everyone who is in the top 20% today started in the bottom 20%. From that point, they began to do something different with their time and their lives, and as a result, they put themselves squarely onto the upward escalator of financial success. No limits on your potential. The average income increase in America is about 3% a year just about the same as the rate of inflation and cost of living increases. People whose income is increasing at 3% a year seldom get ahead. They have a job, which can also be thought of as an acronym for just over broke. But the fact is that no one is better than you and no one is smarter than you. If someone is doing better than you are today, it is simply proof that they have learned how the law of cause and effect applies to their work and they have begun doing the things that other successful people have also done. 
The application of the law of cause and effect to your personal life is learn and do. The achievement of personal excellence is a decision you make or that you fail to make. But in the absence of a commitment to excellence in your chosen field, you automatically default to average performance or even mediocrity. No one becomes excellent accidentally or by just going to work each day. Excellent requires a definite decision and a lifelong commitment. The keys to the 21st century. Knowledge and skill are the keys to the 21st century. Becoming the best person you can possibly be and moving to the top of your field requires the application of self-discipline throughout your life. Mental fitness is like physical fitness. If you want to achieve either, you must work at it all the time. You can never let up. You must be continually learning and growing every day, week, and month throughout your career and in other areas of your life if you're going to join the top 20% and stay there. To earn more, you must learn more. Abraham Lincoln once wrote, the fact that some have become wealthy is proof that others may do it as well. What others have done, you can do as well if you learn how. Everyone who is at the top was once at the bottom. Many people who come from average or poor families with average incomes or who grow up in average circumstances have gone on to become some of the most prominent people in their fields. And what hundreds of thousands and even millions of other people have done, you can do as well. The philosopher Bertrand Russell once wrote, the very best proof that something can be done is that someone else has already done it. Ordinary into extraordinary. Very often you see people who don't seem to be as intelligent or as talented as you are, who are nonetheless accomplishing remarkable things with their lives. There's nothing that would make you angrier than to see someone who seems to be dumber than you, who is doing better than you. How can this be? The answer is simple. At a certain point in their lives, they realized that the key to success was personal and professional growth. It was a dedication to lifelong learning that made them successful. The good news is that almost every important skill is learnable. Every business skill is learnable. Everyone who is proficient in any area of business was at one time completely ignorant in that area. Every sales skill is learnable. Every top salesperson was once a beginning salesperson and unable to make a call or close a sale. All money-making skills are learnable as well. Almost every wealthy person was once poor. You can learn anything you need to learn to achieve any goal you can set for yourself. Make a decision. The starting point of your moving upward and onward toward becoming one of the most competent, most respected, and highest paid people in your field is simple. Make a decision. It's said that every major change in your life comes about when your mind collides with a new idea and you then make a decision to do something different. You make a decision to complete your education, upgrade your skills, or get into a good college. You make a decision to start a new business. You make a decision to take a particular job or start a particular career. You make a decision to invest your money in a particular way. And especially, you make a decision to be the best in your field. Many people say that they would like to be happy, healthy, thin, and rich. But, as discussed in Chapter 4, wishing and hoping is not enough. You have to make a firm, unequivocal decision that you are going to pay any price and go any distance in order to achieve the goals you have set for yourself. You have to make that decision and then burn your mental bridges behind you. From that moment on, you resolve to continue working on yourself and your craft until you reach the top 20% or beyond. Follow the leaders, not the followers. When you decide to be one of the best people in your field, look around you and identify the people who are already at the top. What characteristics do they have in common? How do they plan and organize their days? How do they dress? How do they walk, talk, and behave with other people? What books do they read? How do they spend their spare time? Who do they associate with? What courses have they taken? What audio programs do they listen to in their cars? These are just a few of the questions you should ask in order to find out what successful people are doing that you might also need to do. After all, you can't hit a target that you can't see. Your selection of the right role models can have an enormous impact on your future. Dr. David McClellan of Harvard, an author of The Achieving Society, 
concluded that your choice of a reference group can determine as much as 95% of your success and achievement in life. Your reference group is made up of the people who you feel are just like me. Your natural tendency is to adopt the attitudes, styles of dress, opinions, and lifestyles of the people with whom you identify and associate most of the time. Fly with the Eagles. Some years ago, one of my seminar participants told me his story. Bob Barton said he had started off in his 20s in a large company with about 32 salespeople in his branch. It was his first real job and he was starting at the bottom. Because he was new, he hung around with the other junior salespeople. As they say, birds of a feather flock together. After a month or two, Bob noticed that the top salespeople in the office also associated with each other. They did not spend time with the junior salespeople. They also spent their time differently. When Bob got into work in the morning, the top salespeople were already there, planning their days and working on the telephone and making appointments. Bob also noticed that the junior salespeople would come in later, drink coffee, read the newspaper, and make excuses for not making sales calls. Bob decided that he was going to pattern himself after the top salespeople in the office. He looked at the way they dressed and groomed, and he resolved to dress and groom the way they did. Each morning, he would stand in front of his mirror and ask himself, do I look like one of the top salespeople in my office? If the answer was no, he would go back and change his clothes until he felt that he looked as good as the best people. He began to come into the office and organize his day before 8.30 a.m. so that he was ready to make calls as soon as his customers were available to see him.